Okay. All right. Um, hi guys. Good morning. Um, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing okay. Um, I am going live today to talk about how to help kids with anxiety um, during this time. Um, there's a lot of mixed emotions going on right now, um, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unknowns, um, and sometimes when um, there is a lot of uncertainty and there are a lot of unknowns, um, it can cultivate a lot of fear, um, a lot of stress, um, a lot of anxiety, um, and you guys as parents are probably experiencing that as well. Um, I know all of us are um, experiencing some level of this. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jenny Hoskins, and I am the creator of the Peaceful Parenting Method. I'm a parenting educator, um, and I equip parents with the tools to confidently raise respectful, responsible, and resilient kids. Um, and right now is a perfect opportunity uh, to help our kids cultivate resilience. Um, and there are certain things that we can do um, to help them with that. Um, if you're tuning in today, let me know if you're watching this live or if you're watching it on the replay. Uh, let me know where you're from, how many kids you have, and um, if you feel comfortable sharing how you are doing and managing everything that's going on in the world right now. Um, so I want to just talk about uh, seven things that you can do to help your kids with anxiety and uncertainty. Um, and I think first and foremost is uh, equipping them with this sense of personal power, um, knowing that there are things that they do have control over. Um, there are things that they can focus on um, in order to uh, feel that sense of personal power um, and sense of peace and sense of you know connection and ease uh, during this time. And so that's what I wanna talk about today is things that you can focus on as a parent, you can help your family focus on and you can help your kids focus on as well um, to help mitigate that fear and stress. Um, because like I said, a healthy amount of fear is normal, um, but if it gets um, overreactive, it can start to cause some problems, um, both, both physically, emotionally, and mentally, and spiritually. So um, the first thing that you can do, I think, uh, as a family is to monitor um, and limit the amount of news and information that you are consuming as a family. Um, obviously, we want to stay informed. And especially as quickly as things are changing right now, uh, we need to stay informed. Um, however, um, I think that there is a risk of consuming too much information um, and between social media and all the news sources. Um, and so I think we need to be mindful about how much we are consuming because for many of us, this can cause um, a lot of anxiety, especially if we, um, you know, are compassionate, if we um, are, you know, empathetic, if we have that sort of, you know, natural inclination to uh, worry being very mindful about how much we are consuming um, and also the types of news sources that you are consuming, right? So there's some news sources that are very, um, you know, factual based. They present the information in a way that um, is, you know, very logical and reasonable and it's coming from good sources. Um, and then there are news sources that tend to be more like sensational and uh, fear-based. And um, so I think just being mindful of the sources of, of information um, and the amount of information that you're consuming, I think is going to help a lot. Um, and the second thing that I want to talk about is exercise and movement. Um, exercise can help tremendously um, in calming our mind. Um, it helps us get out of our mind and into our body. Um, it can help kids tremendously. Um, kids who are having um, maybe a hard time with uh, the adjustment from maybe they're, you know, normally involved in other sports activities or extracurricular activities. And so, you know, right now they're not getting that sort of um, outlet that they're used to getting. And so um, how can you incorporate that into the day, into their day? Um, and so, uh, 
there's just get creative with it. I had a friend and I was inspired by her the other day. Um, she, her daughter was supposed to be in a gymnastics meet and, um, it was canceled. And so her and her, uh, husband set up, um, their garage to, uh, in a way so that she could, uh, do the gymnastics meet at home. Um, and I thought that was really creative. Um, so what are things you can do at home to get your kids moving, um, for kids older than six, um, you know, 60 minutes a day is kind of what's the general recommendation. So, um, get kids moving, um, so that they can, uh, stay relaxed and calm in their body and in their mind. Um, so the third thing that you can do is, uh, Gosh, with so much happening, like our worlds have been turned upside down, our routines have been turned upside down. But if you can cultivate some sort of routine um, for your kids, that's going to be helpful. Um, routines help kids feel safe. Um, and so if there's different things that you can pull from, you know, how things were uh, prior to all of this, um, if you can incorporate that into your day um, to provide that sense of stability and safety. And every kid is going to have different thresholds and require a certain, um, you know, some kids might require a little bit more of this than others. Um, but, you know, and then also just keeping in mind too that there is going to be deviation from the routine. Um, and, uh, and that's good for kids too, to build resiliency around that. So finding, um, that nice balance between, um, helping kids feel safe and secure by providing that sense of routine, but also teaching them and challenging them to, uh, be resilient when things, um, you know, when they have to quickly pivot and change, um, which is what we're being asked to do a lot right now. Um, so, uh, first and foremost, information, um, limiting the amount of information, the access, the type of information, where is it coming from? Number two, um, keeping your kids, uh, moving, um, getting, making sure they're getting adequate exercise. This is going to help them get their blood flowing. It's going to help them get out of their heads. Um, and then number three is to try to cultivate some sort of routine, um, that helps create a sense of safety and security and consistency for your kids, which is going to help them feel safe. Um, if you're just tuning in, let us know where you're from, um, how many kids you have, what their ages are. Um, and uh, I'd love to hear about how you are um, dealing with everything that's going on. Um, the next thing that you can do is just kind of going back to basics. Um, just helping kids with their circadian rhythm, um, that's going to help them feel a sense of normalcy, a sense of uh, peace, a sense of calm, a sense of safety. Um, and this can be achieved through making sure they're having balanced meals, making sure they're staying hydrated, making sure that they're getting um, adequate sunlight, um, you know, spending some time outside um, and uh, making sure that they're getting adequate sleep. So this kind of goes back to having a getting a routine, um, having sort of that consistency, having that rhythm, that's going to help tremendously. Um, the next thing that you can do is, um, spending one-on-one -on -one time with your kids and gosh, haven't we all been blessed with, um, you know, extra time on our hands. Um, and if we can shift our perspective to look at this as a gift, um, I think that this can help us a lot. Um, I know for many of us, um, it may not seem like it's a gift, um, cause it might mean that there's, uh, you know, unemployment or you're spending extra time. Um, and it's causing some tension within the home, but I just encourage you to shift your perspective a little bit and, um, look at it as this gift, um, the gift of time and spending one-on-one -on -one time to really connect, really be present with your kids. Um, this is going to cultivate this deep emotional connection, which is going to help them feel safe and secure, um, when, with everything that is happening. Um, I, I encourage parents to do this um, all the time, you know, making sure that you are spending that one-on-one -on -one time with them. And I know um, a, something that comes up that is the, an obstacle that gets in the way of that is time. Um, but right now we have nothing but time for many of us, um, or, you know, we do have an extra amount of time. 
And so um, using it uh, to be intentional and to intentionally connect, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be super simple. Um, you know, just follow your kid's lead. They're really creative. They're really great at playing. They're really good at being present in the moment. And so just join them in the now to really connect and, and cultivate that deep uh, emotional connect connection with them. Um, this is a great opportunity to do that. Um, the next thing that you can do is, um, is help them to uh, cultivate a spirit of faith and trust um, and hope. I don't know um, what your personal spiritual beliefs are, what your religious beliefs are, but regardless of what they are, um, I think that faith and hope is pretty universal. Um, and it's, it's a really great opportunity for you to, uh, to strengthen, um, your faith muscle and also to teach kids to strengthen their faith muscle as well. How can we take this, um, the anxiety and uncertainty of the unknown and transform it into, um, faith and trust, um, that all will be provided for, um, and, uh, and hope that, um, you know, we'll come out of this just stronger, more connected, more congruent. Um, and so I just challenge you to, you know, uh, use this as an opportunity to teach your children about this virtuous value of faith and how they can, uh, use it to, um, to get through this difficult time. Um, and then, the last thing that you can do is to uh, practice reflective listening. Like I said earlier, there's so many emotions that kids are experiencing right now. Um, they might be feeling, um, you know, maybe gratitude about some of this extra time that they have away from school, um, maybe gratitude for extra time they get to spend with you, um, maybe um they're feeling a little bit sad because they don't get to see their friends um, or maybe some of them are missing their their teachers and missing school. Um, and, you know, maybe some of them are feeling anxious about they're not sure what's going to happen. Um, and then, uh, you know, maybe you're they're feeling, you know, a certain degree of sadness um, and empathy towards people who are struggling right now. Um, so there's so many emotions. I think that uh, all of us are experiencing as adults and kids are going through it as well. And so just making sure that we are teaching them to honor those feelings so that they can process them. Um, there's this great book. It's called Feelings Buried Alive Never Die. Um, it's a really, really good book. And it um, it talks about how if we just suppress our feelings and suppress our emotions, um, they it's it's not that they go, they don't go away. They stay there. Um, and then they, they come out at later times. Um, and so we need to make sure that we're processing those emotions and then we're allowing children to do the same. Um, and so we can help them by practicing reflective listening. Um, and there's this really great strategy. It's called name it to tame it. Um, and this is, uh, something that I learned from Dr. Dan Siegel. Um, and simply just, helping the child name what they're experiencing. And sometimes just naming the emotion can actually help um, process it. And that's all that kids have to do. They just have to say, I am feeling this um, and it's okay that I feel this, I'm accepting this. Um, and just really cultivating a sense of mindfulness and acceptance around um, their emotional landscape. Um, Cause, it, Cause it is quite, um, uh, they are probably, you know, experiencing a lot of emotions that they haven't ever, um, experienced before. Um, so I hope this was helpful for you. Let me just go through those seven, um, tips, um, first monitor and limit access to news. Make sure you're being mindful about the news sources that you are, um, uh, getting information from, um, staying informed, but doing it in a way that is, um, smart, right? Um, and then, um, number two, making sure your kids are getting lots of exercise and movement. Um, and this goes for you as well. I mean, all of these things really are good for all of us. Um, number three, keeping a routine and schedule, having that rhythm, having that consistency is going to help kids feel safe. Um, also, uh, getting back to basics. Uh, making sure they're getting well-balanced meals, staying hydrated, getting sunlight, all of those great things. Um, 
uh, number five time, making sure you're spending one-on-one -on -one quality time, being intentional about the time you're spending with your kids, really using this as an opportunity to connect emotionally with them. This emotional connection is going to go a long way for them, I promise you. Um, and then trust and faith, using this as an opportunity to transform this uncertainty um, and some of this fear and anxiety, um, transforming it into um, faith and hope um, and teaching children how to strengthen their faith. Um, and then the last one is to practice reflective listening and to teach children how to um, effectively process their emotions um, by naming them um, and accepting them and uh, and and just releasing them. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, if you need anything from me, please feel free to reach out. I am here to help. Um, also, if you are not already a part of the Peaceful Parenting um, Facebook group, I uh, would encourage you to join and I will include the link either um, in the uh, description of this video or I'll put it in the comments below. Um, again, if you're, uh, tuning in live, let me know. Or if you're watching this on the replay, let me know. I'd love to uh, learn where you're from, how many kids you have, how old they are, how you guys are spending this time, and how you guys are doing. So um, take care, and I will be on tomorrow. So you guys enjoy the rest of your day the best that you can, and I look forward to talking to you soon. All right, take care, everyone.